Good afternoon, fellow Beamers, and welcome back to Beamstream. It's been a while, but we're glad to be back from our brief hiatus to share more great Beam content with you. Today's episode will catch you up on all things Beam, ranging from some of our recent spotlights to upcoming events and cool projects. Let's get into it. A lot has happened since our last Beamstream episode, so I think we should do a little catching up with Beam. Back in early March, Beam participated in a panel discussion on Louis Latimer's life and work in Brooklyn. Co-presented by Beam Center, the Louis Latimer House Museum in downtown Brooklyn partnership, the program explored Latimer's time in Brooklyn during the 19th century and highlighted the Latimer-inspired public artwork Beacon. As you may remember, Beacon was designed by Shervon Knuckles and built by Beam Center's fellows. Thank you to everyone who joined us for the program. You can watch the full recording here on our YouTube channel. Beacon is on view at Albee Square in downtown Brooklyn through the end of April. Go check it out. So, it, it, you know, as a result of Louis Latimer's and, um, uh, in, invention, light just became more accessible to everyone at that time. I mean, it really changed the way people were able to live in the 1880s. It changed the way they were able to literally see, but it also changed the way they were able to live, move, and function, and operate in the world. And so Beacon, the sculpture Beacon, is really a gesture of remembering Louis Latimer's legacy, honoring his ingenuity, and his labor. So now uh, the design um, the design also has this interactive component for those who haven't visited Beacon yet. Um, so Beacon activates uh, depending on one's proximity or interaction with the, the piece because it has these built-in um, proximity sensors. So based on one's, like I said, proximity or interaction with the sculpture, the filament on the inside of the sculpture will emit a kind of pulsing uh, uh, light that fades in and out of full illumination, right? And it's kind of doing it at the pace of like a heart rate or um, a breathing patterns. And so when the viewer actually steps away from beacon or outside of the proximity sensors, that's when the filament will slowly fade out and then completely turn off. Now for me, this interactive feature is really meant to illuminate and remind us all who improved uh, Edison's light bulb. Beam has featured some amazing members of our community. One recent community spotlight series featured the principal of Brooklyn International High School, Kathleen Rucker. Kathleen started at BIHS as a science teacher 19 years ago and has spent the last seven years as principal. Kathleen's philosophy is to push back against how schools traditionally function, to push back against the dominant narrative. Part of this work at BIHS is the school's longstanding partnership with Beam Center. BIHS was first introduced to BEAM through an incubator program more than 10 years ago. According to Kathleen, BEAM has transformed the teaching approach used by teachers and administrators at BIHS. BIHS is also the location of BEAM's first fabrication lab. Created back in 2016, the Fab Lab is still used regularly by teachers and students and includes a variety of tools, such as a laser cutter, saw machines, vinyl cutter, and more. Kathleen says that BEAM changed what teachers see as possible in the classroom and provided a new approach to empathizing with their students. Teachers are asked to learn how to navigate new tools and techniques similar in ways to their students' experience navigating a new country and language. We're grateful that Kathleen remains as an active part of the BEAM community. Another recent community spotlight featured Joe Sean, a member of BEAM's Project Leaders program. Joshan is a senior at City Polytechnic High School and plans to go to Hunter this fall. Joshan, who is also known as JJ, joined the BEAM community during summer 2021 through the city's Summer Youth Employment Program. After a great experience with us on Governor's Island, JJ knew he wanted to come back to BEAM Center. Now, JJ works with the Project Leaders team, the team he came back to BEAM knowing he wanted to be a part of. When asked why he wanted to work specifically with this program, he said, all of my friends that I met at Beam Camp City were project leaders. He wanted to see what they all were talking about when they spoke fondly of their experiences with the program. Now, more than six months into his own project leader experience, JJ says that he loves being part of the team because there's a lot of freedom. You have the freedom to choose, freedom to have your own creations become a reality. When asked about the impact of his Beam experiences, JJ says it's helping him be more outspoken and share his ideas and thoughts. He said, I usually don't advocate for myself often, 
But now that I have been at Beam, I do more often. He also added, most of my real friends are from Beam. Because we made such a good connection, I still talk to them now, even if they are not here at Beam. And that's not like all my other friendships. Thank you for being part of the Beam community, JJ. You can read both Kathleen and Joe Sean's full spotlights on the Beam blog website. We'll include the link in the description below. Cool things happening at Beam. As part of their partnership with Beam, ninth grade students at the Urban Assembly School of Design and Construction spent the last few months working on an interdisciplinary project for their global history class. In collaboration with Beam project designers, students built a multi-part semi-oval model of the Roman Colosseum. In addition to building and decorating the Colosseum, students wrote and starred in a gladiator-inspired performance that they performed for their school community. Some of the skills students learn range from hands-on building skills, digital techniques, and how to work and act on a stage. Students learn how to work with lighting and operate stage curtains during a set, woodworking, and script writing for their performance. Students directed the play, designed the costumes, managed the stage, all while ensuring that the Coliseum was safe to sit on during the performance. Watch the full video here on our YouTube channel. This is new guy. I don't know you, but I'm here to train you. Make sure you strike first, unless you, unless you want to die. Don't fear no man, because every man bleeds. It's kill or be killed. All right, throw my best. First up is our upcoming event, Branching Out with Beam. You are invited to the celebratory brunch we're holding on Saturday, May 14th. Join us that day from 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Estuary on Brooklyn Bridge Drive. We'll celebrate our work, honor the youth that work alongside us, and raise funds to support our summer 2022 programming. Your support will help us continue our summer programs, including Beam Camp City, our Beam Camp Tuition Assistance Fund, this year's big projects, and our Artist in Residency program. Visit our registration page at beamcenter.org backslash branching out to buy your tickets and reserve your spot. Stay tuned for more information about the summer programs you'll be supporting by attending Branching Out with Beam. We've got plenty more going on at Beam, but you'll have to wait until our next episode. See you back here in two weeks for another episode of Beam Stream. In the meantime, stay up to date by following us on Instagram at Beam Center or on Facebook at Beam Center NYC. Catch you later.